Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. What? Hit it. Mr. Craig, guess who we have? I heard it's a doctor. We have Dr. Mark Wade as he summons Summit Secrets, scores your COI, suckers. <laughs> are, you, are, are you calling them suckers? What? Buckle up, it's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Dr. Wade. What's hey! Up? What's, up? What's up, guys? How you doing? How's it going? Doing great. Well. How you doing? doing well. Anytime. Love it. Well. <laughs> Talk to a doctor. It's a very special experience. It is. Oh, now we got um, we got three dudes. Glad to hear that. I'll try. Three dudes. Three dudes and one doctor. <laughs> three dudes and a doctor. Is that like the new 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 hashtag there? Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Excellent. <laughs> I oh, love cool. the backgrounds there, the ACDC, the rocker, is that the Hulk? That's great. I apologize. My background's not nearly as entertaining. I'm, I just got into Puerto Rico last night and I'm staying at my buddy, John Lee Dumas's house and he's using his girlfriend, Kate's room. I've got like 10 different interviews today. It's been like a madhouse. So You're at JLD's house, huh? Oh yeah. Awesome. There's a picture of his girlfriend up there kate so i got this pink flowery thing behind me but you know i'll make it work i think it's great yeah we're we're in a new world pink is pink is for everybody (laughs) power color yeah yep perfect for, for, for those of our audience uh should we call you doctor or or mark or or what, what you, do we do you can introduce me as dr mark <laughs> t wade or whatever but you can just call me mark as we're talking yeah well well mark could could you give a quick uh, a little background and and you know how, how uh just a little background on yourself i'm sorry we just yeah absolutely in. Boom, just came in rocking and rolling. Okay. So yeah, you know, I am a postural neurologist by trade. I have two doctorates and a couple dozen certifications in neurology, neuroscience, posture, etc. Um, and I ran a posture correction clinic, one of the world's most successful posture correction clinics for about a decade uh, until I transitioned into online business and thought it would be pretty easy and found out the hard way it was not. They don't actually teach you some of those tactics in med school, right? Right. So, um, and I still still actually remember the first time I told my dad, uh, you know, that I was gonna create this online institute is what I was telling him. And he just looked at me, he's like, boy, are you crazy? He's like, you're a doctor. What do you know anything about a computer? And so I actually started to believe him there for a while. Uh, until I actually heard on a podcast, uh, a friend of mine, Pat Flynn smart pa- from the Smart Passive Income, talk about this concept of a virtual summit. And I tried essentially everything until that time. And I said, whatever, let's give it a whirl. So I ran it and um, it actually did well. We, I actually couldn't put together a full multi-day summit because I didn't have enough speakers, but I ran it as a one-day summit. And that one-day summit you know, ended up doing about 5,000 leads generating around $30,000 and was like my first success I'd ever had online. And then that ended up that business, that actual one day summit became the backbone for a certification that we created, which became a multi-million dollar certification. That company went on to be a multi multi million dollar company. And now my dad doesn't think I'm so dumb anymore. Yeah. So let's go back to when all this stuff wasn't working and all of a sudden, (laughs) You had that many leads and that much money rolling in. Yeah. Like what was your mind just freaking blown or what? Well, honestly, like leading up to that, it was, it was like, this is kind of like the last, last right? ditch effort. Like I've tried everything else and you know, I'm pretty ambitious. I was raised to kind of believe if you set your mind to it, you can do it type of thing. And I had my mindset and I was trying, but I was not doing there for a while. So 
Um, and it, you know, there's a learning curve to everything and rightfully so. But when that happened, I mean, it was like a breath of fresh air because it, one, it opened up freedom and opportunities. I ended up selling the clinic and then transitioning full time into online business. And from there, I, I, I now have several six, seven and multi seven figure companies. But the other thing was kind of for me, you know, a little bit selfishly, it was, uh, it was self-validation. Like, okay, this idea that literally every single person had told me was dumb or was not possible, like was actually possible and it was real. And so I was kind of proud of myself, not giving up on that dream or idea, even though there was so many difficulties or struggles along the way. It just had to make it so much sweeter when it, when it worked, right? <laughs> it did. It truly did those naysayers will always hop in there. And you even had your, your dad telling you that yeah. you were crazy, right? Yeah. And you know, I get, I, I, I jest about it. He, he, along with everybody, I mean, honestly, everybody right. we said, just said like, the idea seems silly. Like you're going to create an online Institute about posture. Like who cares about posture for <laughs> one? And like, what's an online Institute, you know, and you know, yeah. they all have valid ideas, but nobody, I think one of the powers of, you know, people in entrepreneurial space or just like, you know, any space really is, you know, I believe like we can, we get kind of ideas or things that we're supposed to receive right now. Not all of them are things we should set out on our life's mission to do. But for me in particular, like I know when I get an idea and I can't shake it, like I get lots of ideas and they come and they go. But when an idea comes into my head that I can't shake, there, it's there for a reason. And I think a lot of times, a lot of us give up on, on things that could truly become fruitful, whether it's monetarily or even impactful, like make an impact in the world. Uh, we give up on it far too quickly because we're listening to kind of the naysayers, as you're saying. And I think That's it's almost natural for us to tell ourselves that. It's natural to say, you know what? I don't think this is going to work. Like at some point you're like, oh, like this just, you're, I should have listened. Uh, this isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. It's like you're, you talk yourself out of it at some point. Yeah. And that's the importance of having, that's the importance of surrounding yourself uh, with like-minded people for one, or people that believe in you, whether it's, you know, for example, like a mastermind or a coach or a mentor, or even if you're not at that level yet, even podcasts like these to be around people that can support you on that idea and say, Hey, look, I failed over and over and over again. And if I would have listened to everybody else, you know, millions and millions of dollars and literally tens of thousands of people who are better now would never have happened. Yeah. And so yeah. the bridge from going from, I mean, most people, can't make it to become a neurologist, right? I mean, to, to be successful and even just be a regular doctor, right? You're, you're literally at the pinnacle, I think, of, of you know, mm. the brain doctor. So mm. how hard was it to go from that practice and, and doing that? Or were you, were you sick of it? Did the entrepreneurial bug like finally come out? What led to that? Yeah, well, I, I do have the entrepreneurial DNA for sure. So I'm always on a quest for m bigger, better, and more. Okay. Um, usually from a good, <laughs> from the right place, not always from the right place, but usually right. from the right place. <laughs> In that particular instance, it was, I wanted to help more people, but I didn't want to build more practices, more clinics because they, I mean, that is a challenge in and of itself. And right. I just knew, you know, I kind of, I was a little bit forward thinking in the sense, I mean, you got to keep in mind when I started that online business, it was about seven years ago now. So, you know, back then, like there was nothing like this online, um, which is another reason everybody thought I was kind of crazy because there was no social <laughs> proof that it had happened yet. Right. But it was really more about like, there's got to be an easier way to help more people okay. and let's go explore that. And, you know, to be quite honest, kind of when I, every business I start, I always bootstrap it in the sense of, you know, like I didn't use the clinic to fund the online business. Like it was like sink or swim. This is either going to build, it's either going to be a valid concept or it's not. And that's, and I've had plenty of businesses that have failed too. And I do believe that's important because if you can't get it to float and then to swim, 
then it's not necessarily something you should keep doing for years and years and years. Like it, it should either happen or not. Um, but with that, it was, let's try this kind of online deal and let's start investing into education around that. And at the time, again, I separate and segment my businesses. So what was funding that business? There was, it was bootstrapped. So there wasn't much cash. So I wasn't paying for myself to go to a lot of conferences and things like that at first in this niche or industry. Mm -hmm. So my education came from books and podcasts and that's where I was getting my idea, my inspiration and my learning. And then once the business started having money, then I started to pay to go to conferences, masterminds, coaches, mentors, et cetera. Skilled that way. That's interesting. That keeps you very grounded. I think a lot of people lose that at some point. And the best example is like, let's say Guns N' Roses, right? Guns N' Roses' <laughs> first album was freaking awesome. And it was because they were living on the streets. Then they get money and then they all, you know. Well, it's also the fastest way to blow a lot of money um, <laughs> yeah. is when you have it and you, you get comfortable, you spend it. Like I, cause I, the reason I do this is I know now, like I've made the mistake of, of dipping into other businesses to pay for other businesses. And then you can end up actually jeopardizing your other ones. So that, I mean, to put this in relative relative terms like maybe you don't have other businesses but like even if you're an employee somewhere and if you're you're tapping into your family's funds you know you could put your family at jeopardy you, you got to find a way mm. to bootstrap it at the beginning and make it make it profitable or even just monetize it as quickly as possible whatever that concept or idea is yep and that the beauty of the internet is it allows you to well reach so many more people mm. right you can scale much mm -hmm. quicker and, and with relatively low startup costs, right? You don't have a retail outlet. There's no rent. It's all just, you know, Hey, you have to spend some ad and, and try it out. Is this idea going to get some traction as long as you have your targeting down and all that kind of stuff? How, yeah, so it, it took a while for that to hit and then it was successful. So mm -hmm. when did you pivot and start going off to some other things? Yeah. So that business, I mean, talk about from feast to famine type of thing. That business went from about uh, six to six months with like zero happening to from the point of that summit, about 18 months, it was a million dollar company. Um, wow. So relatively quick. And then it became a multi, multi million dollar company. And it's still to this day, the world's largest provider of postgraduate online and posture education. Um, but from that, like one, you know, when I find something that works, like I double down, triple down, quadruple down on it. And so we started running summits like that worked for us at the beginning. Of course, we did a lot of other things. We did a lot of other things, but the summits were the backbone to everything we did from then. And even now, um, so we started running multi-day summits. We still to this day and then run four to eight multi-day summits every year. We run, or excuse me, two to four multi-day summits and four to eight one-day summits. And these are virtual, think of like virtual conferences, if you will. We can get into the specifics of that in a moment if we need to. But essentially, um, we started running those. And at the time when I did that first one, I was just talking about, it took seven different pieces of software, 26 plugins, all <laughs> Frankenstein together and still look like a third grader built it. Right. Like it, it was horrendous. Um, and it cost me like, it, it cost me a decent amount of money. And so after that, I started, once we started having the success, I had a team of four working full time, like four staff members full time doing these summits. And I just kept thinking to myself, there's gotta be an easier way to do this. Like we can do a webinar pretty quickly. We can, you know, do a course pretty quickly. Why are summits so difficult? Uh, and that's when I decided like, well, if it doesn't exist, let's just go ahead and build it. So about three or two, two years ago now, I decided, well, it was three years ago when I had the idea. And I honestly, I slept on the idea. I was telling you when I have an idea, I can't shake. I kept telling myself, Mark, you're not a software guy. You have no coding. Like you got lucky with the online stuff. Don't try and chance it three times. But literally every night for about seven months when I'd go to sleep, I'd, I'd, I'd see this online summit platform. So I decided finally, I was like, okay, screw it. Let's build it. So I built <laughs> it and we created the virtual summit software, which was the first ever software specifically for summits. And it was to run our own summits. Then people started hearing about it. Like you could 
now put together a summit, which took me hundreds of hours and all those different pieces could be done within a few hours with zero tech, zero coding at all. And so after that, we started getting kind of an influx of people who wanted to use the software. And that's when I started transitioning to my next journey um, was, you know, I should be, you know, now this is established. I, I, if you haven't noticed, I'm a glutton for punishment. I like to take on the new <laughs> difficult challenge. So we had that, all, the American Posture Institute was already rocking and rolling. We have a full team, you know, everything's going there. So I set it up with an operator to allow me to go over here into this business right back up into start startup world. And that's what I started focusing on helping, helping people who have a message, get that message out to the world via a collaborative marketing strategy. So for both those businesses, um, how, if somebody's like super interested in, in visiting those sites right now, could you just throw out, um, the addresses yeah. so, so they can check them out? Absolutely. Um, the American Posture Institute.com. You'll see my beautiful partner, Dr. Krista Byrne Burns, who also has a variety of doctors doctorates. She has two and a half. She's working on her third right now. So we're both kind awesome. of addicted to the education, if you will. <laughs> um, we have that one going right there. And then Virtual Summit Software, you can check out at virtualsummits.com. It falls under the brand of viral summits. Perfect. So then, so virtual summits, um, let's get into how that took off and then where'd you go from there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that definitely took off everybody, you know, summits, maybe like what, what a summit is. Cause I've been throwing that word around. People may be like, well, what in the world are you yeah. talking about? Mark? Cause I understand I didn't, I didn't get it either at the beginning. Like is, what is it as a webinar? Is it an online conference? Like it's kind of like both, if you will. It's what I like to call the collaborative marketing strategy. And what that is, it's a way to build an engaged audience and collaborations or partnerships while getting your message out to the world. And the way that looks like is typically we take a concept, a problem that our audience or, you know, that somebody we would like to bring on as an audience has. And we solve that problem by bringing on industry and niche experts to talk about solutions. Now it's typically pre-recorded. We put it all together and then we give it away for free for a period of time. So one day, two days, three days, whatever. And the audience can access these industries, these thought leaders for free and get the solutions to their problems during this period, you know, during while, it, while it's available. And so it's a really, really powerful way to immediately kind of position yourself as a thought leader, as an authority in whatever your niche or industry is, while also building an engaged audience that now looks to you for their solution. So whether you're, you know, you have services or products or courses, you know, they're looking to you for guidance on going after that. And then again, those experts that you have on, it's a really powerful way to build relationships with them, um, you know, for ongoing strategic partnerships or even, you know, creating referrals sources depending on your industry or niche so the cool thing is you know we've been now not only hosting our own summits uh, lots of those but I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs host their own summits in a variety of different industries and niches and we've seen it in just about every niche or industry work matter of fact the more kind of specific and non online type of industries almost the more powerful we see them work because most people they, they're used to like having to pay to go travel, take time off of work, away from family, things like that. And they can get access to this same high level quality information from their home or office, sometimes even in their pajamas, you know? So it's a really, yeah. really cool way of distributing it, knowledge. And I think that's great because I think a lot of people think there's no way it's going to work for this. And it's like, well, that actually, to your point, it might actually work better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey Jason, do you oh, yeah. know any any industries that are that that don't have really good tech? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so it's like the old insurance space. The old insurance yeah. space. I mean, in this space, this would be something that I think would would really really fit, and that's one of the reasons why, obviously, you're here. So, yeah. And we can niche, we'll, we'll niche this down now, make it even more specific in, in this area. Because like, again, I just helped a, a client do a, a summit in the self storage space. Like, I mean, self storage, wow. like, I, I want, I didn't even know those things still exist. They do. And they're <laughs> right. very valuable. 
And, you know, so like, and his thing went viral because there's all these owners, the owners of the self-storage spaces, the managers who run them, and then even people who are looking or interested in using them had easy access to get that information, that training, that knowledge all online, where usually the managers never get the information because it's just the owner that go to these conferences and like Vegas or Florida and then they try and come back and disseminate that information, you know? So yeah, like, um, I even saw, saw a summit done in the dog, um, meditation space, which was probably the most <laughs> interesting one I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So if you have that your industry out there and you're thinking it's not possible for you, it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it went well. There's actually a huge um, fan base about dogs and meditation and tapping into what they're, what they're trying to say to you. So I love that. That is awesome. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so you did, so you went into the summit space. Where did that lead you to? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, from there, you know, I created the software and at the time, honestly, I, I say a lot of times I'm a little naive as well, because a lot of times I think it's going to be easier than it is. And that's what takes me into the venture. And then if I ever knew how difficult it really was going to be, I may not have actually done it. But, you know, I thought essentially if I, well, I've got this software that allows people to run summits. If I just kind of open the doors, people come running in and they don't, you know, it turns out you do need to kind of market stuff and position it. And so then I started because I, you know, I, I already have this company over there. I didn't necessarily want to go do this full time at the, at the time, but then I took it on. I looked at it as an opportunity to help really inspiring people that have really powerful messages that just need help getting it in front of people. And so I started creating educational components um, like my one day summit formula, which essentially takes the overall summit, like a multi-day summit, which can seem kind of daunting and can seem really difficult and challenging. And it's, it, that is kind of specific in certain niches or industries, really. You can do it just about everywhere, but with the one day summit, it minimizes everything. It's, you know, if a multi-day summit is anywhere from three to 14 days with 20 to 80 speakers, um, a one day summit is like it says, it's one day. Now it doesn't mean it's a full day in content. It just means it, that your audience has one day to consume it. It doesn't mean it's a full full day in length. And it has anywhere from about five speakers, maximum 15 with 10 usually being the sweet spot. So you can see this is a much more consumable, much more doable, especially for somebody who's just getting started and is like, Man, I don't even know what a summit is. How could I take this all on? Um, but with that, additionally, it's overcoming a big challenge that most of us are seeing in the world today, which is attention span. So we've seen attention spans drastically decreasing. So now with the one day summit, the big difference is if, if a multi-day summit is like bringing the entire army, the cavalry, and we're going to go like bring everything. One day summit is like a ninja assassin, assassin if you will. Mm -hmm. It's very versatile. It's very effective, but it can be used for a lot of different reasons. So multi-day summit is like a list builder. It's there to generate an audience. And that's the most powerful way. And to get, just get your message out there. Pete, you are going to be known in your industry or niche after multi-day summit. Now with a one day summit, it's really great for essentially solving a problem and building a relationship because we can be much more tactical. Now we can choose one thing. And the reason that overcomes attention span is not just the amount of content that is in it is because now we can be much more specific with our messaging with our wording. So because of attention span, people are getting, or because of the internet, people are getting bombarded with everything all the time. And they're like tuning everything out except for what they're actively searching for. So if mm -hmm. you take your audience, whoever your audience is, and this is going to be really cool too, because you can even use this in brick and mortar businesses as well, but you take whoever your audience is and choose, find what is their top problem that they're struggling with. Now, sometimes you may have a hard time figuring that out if you haven't kind of thought about it. So if you're having a hard time, just write out like two or three problems. So whatever their top problem is, that's what you're going to build your one day summit around. And it's still the same concept. Okay. So we take that one problem and then maybe you guys can even give me an example. What would in somebody in your industry, their clientele, hiring, hiring would be a problem. Right. Okay. 
the biggest number so one. So this is their problem or this their audience's problem, their clients' this is, problem? So in the insurance space, the insurance agents who are Jason and I, finding, well, recruiting, recruiting, hiring, re, uh, retaining, and training the top talent are the, are the biggest okay. challenges. So but we're going to go meta here. This is actually going to be, this would be for you then. So if you're trying to bring together insurance agents to either follow you or build an audience, you mm -hmm. know that one of their top problems is hiring. Okay. So you're going to go and you would always position it around the problem. So especially over in the health space, we like, you know, we like to be very positive and full of love and stuff like that. So we like to go more towards the pleasure side, but people are in their problem. They're in their pain. So you really want to kind of position it around whatever that problem or pain is that they're, they're, they're solving. So it could even be something like, you know, did you walk in the office on Monday and realize there's an empty desk that now you have to do their work for them or something like that, right? Somebody just left the business and now it's like, man, now I have to pick up that slack. Who do I yeah. hire? Okay. So now, you're going to take that problem and you're going to identify, you know, five to 10 solutions to that problem. So hiring is, you know, maybe knowing what the job qualification is or where to look to for this or um, what, uh, like who is the right person to hire. So, you know, you're going to write out those solutions that now tells you those solutions are going to become your sessions. And that also tells you who you go look to, to come speak, on your summit, who can answer this solution, who can talk on this solution. The other aspect to it is usually anybody that can talk on that solution is going to have somewhat of an audience base that you're looking for as well. So this is why we call it a collaborative marketing strategy is their audience. When they promote the summit, their audience is going to come to the summit as well. And essentially we're all going to be sharing that summit. So that's how simple it is to actually build that or like strategize out what an actual summit is now because we're talking in their specific wording so for example if hiring is their number one problem and i see this mistake happen all the time so we might say well we want to like actually talk about like something that's more cool or more fun and maybe we're talking about a new insurance program so we're going to do a summit about this new insurance program or so, or for example, in the health space, because I'm more familiar with that, like a health professional who's trying to atta attract an audience of consumers may go, well, thyroid problems. That's, that's a, that's a popular one. Nobody is looking on the internet for, I have a thyroid problem, right? Like they don't even know they have a thyroid problem. They are going, I have a migraine or I have problems sleeping or I have a lack of energy. See how much more specific yeah. those wordings or that problem is. So think about that in your industry. Mm. Go ahead. I'm so, you, you're, yeah, you're yeah, speaking. So think about that. In yeah. Sorry, you go. So. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So essentially you, you, you identify that wording because now in, in the, the second, Secondary question that usually pops up into people's head is, well, but that's so specific. It's so niche. Like I'm not going to, you know, I'm, it's not going to be that big. The summit, it's not going to attract enough people. And that's false for one. Um, it, you, you'd be surprised at how many people there actually are in these niches. But for two, it, let's assume that it does attract a smaller audience. It's a much more qualified and engaged audience. I would yeah. rather have a thousand people that are ready to move forward with me with my next service or product than 10,000 people that are kicking the tire and just asking me questions all day. that are not going to move forward right. with me. But that's really uh, kind of the importance of that. It's all those negative thoughts, right? There's always, there's always a reason that you tell yourself it's not going to work. It's to this, it's to that, like exactly, yeah. That I, I think the the um, being specific, and if you can niche it down to fewer people, would definitely, definitely, it would make it easier for you because then you know exactly their problem and you know exactly how you can solve it. Exactly. And so we can, you can even look at this. So we've been talking about it virtually up to this point in the sense of, you know, like I, I work on an international basis. My, I have online programs and services or virtual services essentially. So I can work with anybody in the world so I can target any type of speakers, 
But again, speaking more so like even to the health industry or niche, which is specific, which is very similar, for example, for insurance agency or a painter or, you know, anybody who has a brick and mortar business, essentially, you want to be targeting people in your demographic area. Well, what's really cool about that is now based on online advertising, like Facebook, Book in Google, you can literally target people in a specific zip code. So we can narrow that down, the, the, the targeting. So because of that, now how we can kind of change our one day summit is we can look at it more from actual local people. We can find either, I like to look at it from one of two ways. We can either look at local authority or influencers or, or experts in our community, in our city, and we can bring them on to speak because we know they'll have some influence and they're gonna have an audience. Or two, what we do with our healthcare professionals who, who are, we, we, we set up ref, people who are gonna be referral sources for them ongoing. So for, you know, a, a doctor or maybe let's say a chiropractor, for example, they could bring on a trainer, a nutritionist, um, a physical therapist, or, you know, a dentist onto their one day summit who now they've built, they get to build an opportunity to build a relationship with these people who can then refer patients to them ongoing, even after the summit ends. So you can look at it as two ways. You can look at it one to build your audience so you're attracting somebody onto your summit that already has an audience you want to target or two, an ongoing referral source of somebody after you've built the relationship with them, which will continue to send patients or cu customers or clients into your office. This is huge too. Within the insurance space, there's something called centers of influence, right? So you get all your centers of influence, you know, you're reaching out to loan officers and realtors and everything. Um, there is so much opportunity doing this, especially in your area where you can be, you know, the mayor of this whole operation here and, and get yeah. to know them. Yeah. I mean, think of it like this too. So not only do you get to build an amazing relationship for that, and again, and I apologize, I'm giving more examples to the health space. I just don't want to mess up terminology and look like a dud in front of your audience when it comes to the insurance space. I'm not no, it's very great. well versed yeah. on that. But in, in the health space, for example, and I can talk on this because I've, I've done a lot of these mistakes, is when I first got started with that clinic, right, that I talked about, my marketing strategy was to go to all of the gyms and my neighbors and the stores in the same area that we were at and hand them a bunch of flyers and say, hey, you should send me your, your customers. And yeah. like, who the heck are you and why right. would I ever send you anybody? Like, <laughs> I mean, like the, the, the point of this is, what was I doing? I was asking, I was asking for something before I ever gave anything. If you like people would be happy to reciprocate. Um, it's, there's even a psychological trigger called the rule reciprocity mm -hmm. is if we lead with value or give people are much more willing and want to give back. So when you do a one day summit, for example, and you reach out to somebody who could be a potential referral source, you're not reaching out with an ask, you're reaching out with a give. You're saying, hey, I'm putting together this prestigious and influ influential program that's going to, you know, it's going to highlight some other amazing uh, experts or authorities in our community and I would like to put position you alongside of them this is going to look great for you and of course you're going to position your summit as something that sounds amazing like you know the best insurance ever summit right and so people are like wait you're the and then you can say I'm the host of the best insurance ever summit like oh you're the, you're the host of that you must be an authority you must be an right. expert and you've got the mayor on your platform as well and you know the the local sheriff or whatever so you can see how that can position one with a give before you ever ask you and a lot of times you don't even have to ask after that they're like I need to refer these people to somebody anyways. I want to do it with somebody I have a relationship with right. and that I believe is going to give them care and help. And you're the expert because you, because they know you. That is awesome. I mean, any, any agent in any city could do this, right? Get this software. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how hard is it to put together the well, whole, because actually I was, yeah. <laughs> you read yeah. my mind there. So I was going to say anybody can do it now. 
three years ago, no, not anybody could do it unless you were a glutton for punishment like myself. And you want to go figure <laughs> out how to code and put together WordPress and 26 things like that. So, or you could pay, you know, there's companies out there that charge anywhere between 25 and $50,000 to run summits for people because of how powerful they are. They make more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, the summits do so that, that should tell you something, but Again, my solution, my thought was like, I don't want to have to do that. And I don't think everybody should have to do that. I think anybody should be able to get their message. If you have a compelling message that can make an impact in the world, I feel like you should have that opportunity to do it. And so that's where the software comes in. So we're, everything we've been talking about here is strategy because we don't have to talk about technical aspects anymore. Because if you can type on a keyboard and type your name or a title of something, then you can run a summit now with the virtual summit software. It literally takes maybe a couple hours total to put all the information in. It's, you know, it's uh, what a type and click, I guess, and or copy and paste and it's done. It's and it's literally um, the, the price is $97 a month. So it's like a couple cups of coffee a week, essentially mm -hmm. you can do this. So the, my whole point was, this is more of like a legacy project for me. This is not my, you know, I'm trying to become a billionaire off of this. I really want to help for me, 10,000 people get their messages out to the world. And this is one of the ways I get to do that. Love it. Love That's it. That's awesome. That I think awesome. so many agents should Try it. I mean, you know, it's going to work. It, it literally, literally the agents do the same thing, but in a very, a much more difficult way. And this is like you said, for 99 bucks a month, man, just get your cell phone out and start rocking. And, what? and I'd say that I'd say it like this too. Like if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. And usually there's one King of the top, a King of the mountain, right? So the first person to it now, what we see is once somebody does it in their community or even in an industry, then other people see how it works and they jump on the bandwagon and do it. But I'll give you a specific yep. example. That person in the self storage space, which I talked about now, we got hundreds of examples of these, like kind of like out of like self storage. Even I was like, Oh man, I don't know. I've never, I don't even, you know, like let's try it and see um, what he told me, for example, was when he first did it, he was reaching out to people to, to speak on. Now he did it on a national basis. Um, so not specifically in his community, but um, when he did it, he got, he got about 70% yeses from the speakers he reached out to and about 30% no's. Cause the other 30% was like, I have no clue what you're talking about. What, what is yeah. a virtual summit? Like I'm not <laughs> going to take the time to figure it out. But as soon as it was done, those 30% came back to him and said, Hey, if you do this again, can I be on it? Because they saw the power of it. So he immediately went from these people didn't even know who he was to now they're saying, Hey, can I be on your next summit? And so here's the power of like, so I wanted to point that out, but then the power of being first, he told me that he's already heard of somebody trying to set up another summit like this. Right. So it's like, they saw that he's doing, it goes from the self storage space who's never seen a virtual summit in its history to now there's going to be a second one. But the first person who does it, if you keep that either annual or even do more of them, you maintain hold of the authority. So you will always have the best or the first, however you want to look at it, mm. summit in either your community or your niche or your industry. So the first to market with that usually retains the most power, the most, the most influence as well. I and so, so you, you, you open it up, you give it, you give the summit away for free. Right. You just say, Hey, we just want, we want people here. And then, then do you close it and say, mm -hmm. if you want to, yeah. if you want access now you pay or, or what, like from a strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the power of a, of a summit, you know, we've talked about the, the partnerships and then, you know, the, mm -hmm. the audience generation, if you will. Um, there's also the, there is a profit aspect to it. Now I like to say the summit is your relationship building strategy. That's where you build the no like, and trust. So you don't want to like go too hard on monetization on the summit because people start to feel, eh, you know, like it's a little icky. It's selling Not that you at that point. Yeah. You shouldn't not sell like, and we'll talk about that. So all summits do make money. I just talk about it last. So everybody understands that it's the relationship and that's the most important because mm. my, for example, my first that I told you about that summit, my first $136,000 launch 
came from a list or an audience of 900 people, which came from a one day summit. So it's not about generating a huge list or huge audience. It's about how engaged and qualified they are. So the, that's the point of the relationship. Like we make it about building a relationship. Now, with that being said, the audience gets access to that information for free during the time it's live, if you will. And when I say live, I just mean when you're offering it. Now you set that date. You can say, I'm going to do it three months from now and I'm going to do it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if I'm doing a multi-day summit, or I'm going to do it on Thursday, for example, if I'm doing a one day summit. So you will, your, your speakers will help promote it. They will tell their audience about it. You can do paid marketing if you want, although it's secondary to the other type, which is having your speakers help you promote it. And the audience gets to watch it for free. Now, when it ends, it's, it locks down. And keep in mind, everything I'm telling you, the software handles. Like, I'm just telling you the process, but the software takes care of it. But the audience opts in. When the summit goes live or is available, the software will open it and your audience now can consume the different sessions. So, if you have multiple days, it unlocks the day and the time based on that date and time. And then, you know, closes that for the next day, et cetera, et cetera. Once it's over though, you can either just keep it closed or if you wanted, you could just leave them with access to it ongoing. However, what we typically do is we'll close it and we'll offer what we call an all access pass. So they can purchase for a nominal fee, anything from $20 upwards of like $100, whatever you set it in. And honestly, if it's a professional industry and these haven't been done before, I would charge a double because they will, it, it's okay for that. It's like, it is. So anywhere from 67 to 97, if it's a professional industry like we do in the health space for healthcare professionals and doctors, we usually go anywhere from about 79 to 197. But what happens is they can purchase the all access pass, which you'll provide some additional things like some cool bonuses you want to throw in there. But what it does is it gives them ongoing access to that information, meaning maybe they didn't have time to watch everything or maybe, or hopefully it was so valuable and such good information. They're like, I want to have, maintain access to that so I can watch it later. When they purchase the all access pass, it unlocks their access and they get to keep that ongoing. So there is a monetization aspect to it where you will make money. It's why we usually call this fancy terminology a summit, a self liquidating offer, meaning usually it generates you an audience and makes you money and you don't even have like for free essentially. Um, but yeah, so from there, we typically will have what we call the post summit profit strategy. And that's then where we direct this newly engaged audience into whatever our next promotion campaign offer or service is going to be. Love it. So good. That's awesome. <laughs> so good. So, um, outside of this, what do you have going on next And it? Tell us how is Puerto Rico, man? Ah, Puerto Rico es increíble. <laughs> so yeah, no, Puerto Rico has been home for about three years. It's absolutely phenomenal. I will say on top of it being in the island of enchantment and absolutely stunning and beautiful, it is becoming an entrepreneurial haven. We, When I first got here, John Lee Dumas, my buddy, he convinced me to move here a little over three years ago. And then at that time there was like six of us and now it's like there's something between five to ten people a month moving here there's hundreds and hundreds of us so it's becoming you know a place really for collaboration for community hanging out with really awe-inspiring entrepreneurs all across the the realm like in all kinds of different industry and niches not just like online space podcasters whatever like a lot of different stuff um so that's super cool um outside of that man i'm 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 hustling to help build a a platform to allow people to get their messages out. I, we've got our first live event happening next year called Summit Fest Live, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, really looking forward to actually being able to meet my audience kind of face to face because uh, you lose a little bit of that in the virtual world, yeah. right? Like, and I'm a, I'm a yeah. people person. I like, I like people. So that's cool. It's exciting, inspiring for me. Where's um, that going to be? Other, that's going to be in my favorite city in the world, New Orleans. Nice. Oh, wow. Cool. Fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> so um, I honestly, I just got back from about, I was in Medellin, Colombia for five months. I did a Spanish immersion program there. And then last month, I actually, I just got back into Puerto Rico last night. I was in uh, Cabos, Mexico for Mastermind, oh. called Mastermind Talk. So nice. Been traveling a lot, a lot lately. Well, so, so at what, no, you go for it. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, so at what point, did you live in the box of what is considered normal? You're going to school uh, to become a doctor. And at some point now, somebody that listens to this is like, man, he's all over the place. He's doing all this incredible stuff. At what point did you lose those limiting beliefs? And did you just like, you know what? Like I'm doing all kinds of different, different. Well, I guess what people would consider different in, in, in the whole. Yeah. Well, I was always an outside of the box, both good and bad. I, I, I had my flaws as well, but I was in the military. Um, I was army guard. And then my sophomore year in my pre-med program, I was actually pulled out of school and sent to Iraq for 18 months. And that's um, honestly when it hit me for the first time, you know, I was young, I was 20 something years old. And up until that point, I honestly, I thought the whole world kind of revolved around me, right? Like as we do when we're young, it's like, <laughs> yeah. if I stop, the world stops, right? Right. But when I got over there, it quickly became apparent, you know, like at the beginning, I was getting letters and emails and gift packages and stuff like that. And within a few months, those started to slow down and, and, and slow in, and, and less and less. And, you know, my, my mom and dad are still going out to dinner and, you know, my grandmother's still going to church. And like, I started to realize like life is actually continuing on for everybody else as if I was not there. And that's when it kind of hit me. Like, you know, I was out in the combat and we've had several close calls. And I was like, if I died today, like, what legacy have I, have I left? What message have I said to the world? What would live on after me? And I made a vow to myself right there is when I came home, I would live every day building a legacy, one for myself and then now one for others as well. So I've always kind of had an outside of the box thing and enough has never been enough for me. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It's just, every moment that I have on this planet is an opportunity to give and do. And that's kind of where, where my mindset is. And so add that with an entrepreneurial spirit and a little bit of rebelliousness inside <laughs> of that. You're always looking for new and cool things and opportunities. And I, I like, I do think one of my skill sets is I'm, I would say what we call coachable. I'm, I have, I have a hard, you know, I, I have ideas and opinions that I'll stick to, but I, when I ask for advice, I take it. And I think if I would give anybody like just entrepreneurial kind of in, in advice or guidance is one, if you ask for advice, take the advice, you know, only ask for advice from people that you truly respect and look up to or do mm. what you want to do. But then when you ask for it, do it. Like, because a lot of times the advice we get is not the advice we want. So if you just want advice you want, just say, tell somebody, please tell me this <laughs> and just tell them what you want them to tell you. <laughs> or if you want to improve, listen to the advice. And then the second thing I would say um, is relationships. Like I, I value people in relationships and I invest as much into relationships as I do my business. I, I believe it was two years ago. I spent about $150,000 on masterminds. And I'm not saying you, anybody should do that. I'm just saying for me to be around in, in people that I admire, look up to respect and, or that I value you um, on a personal level for me is worth it. And it's always paid back infinitely in that regards. Man, such so a, true. such a great theme. That's just yeah. resonating on every episode. It's like it, it, it reinvest in yourself. It just keeps coming back. That proximity is power being around the right people. You're some of the five people. I mean, JLD says it all the time, right? You're some of the five people that you, that you're closest with. So, uh, and you're, you're in close proximity with a really good dude too. So, um, Hey, Dr. Mark, thank you so much. It, it's, uh, an honor. I know that we went a little bit over, but we appreciate your time. And, and, uh, for the summit, we, we have the other two, uh, links in the middle and, and we'll grab those. We'll post in the notes. What do, um, how can people do the, the live one? 
Yeah, well, absolutely. You can go to Summit Fest. Uh, summitfestlive.com is where you can sign up if you're interested in coming hanging out with a bunch of world changers uh, impact makers specifically around the, the the regards of summits anybody that is looking maybe you're like okay you know what I, I want to look into this one day summit thing a little bit more uh, we have our one day summit starter guide which I'm happy to throw over to you guys which you can give away to your audience for free so that'll get them you know started on how to do that um, which is really cool. kind of the, the, the starting point, I would say, anybody looking to, okay. to jump in that. That'd be great. Wow, yeah. thank you. That's phenomenal. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'll say hi to, to John <laughs> to, for us. And uh, you have a good I'll one, let man. Him know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, have a good one. Thanks so much. And I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you guys for having me on. And I just say this, any of you listening to this episode right now, just know this, your message matters and you have an impact that you need to make into the world. So go out there and do it. Heck yeah. It's awesome. Love Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, man. 55% of insurance sales producers say that they have had little or no sales at training. Us agents focus on marketing to drive activity and often overlook the sales presentation. Improvements in mindset, shifting focus, rapport, needs diagnosis, value building, creating buy-in and overcoming objections lead to drastically better closing numbers. The solution? Enroll your team in September Sales Summit offered by Agency Vault. We will even assess your team to see which of their sales steps need the most improvement. Head to agencyvault.com to sign up before it's full. Hey, thanks for checking out the insurance dudes. Hey, please subscribe. We got some really great stuff coming out.